Okay, so let's go ahead and make a front end for the smart contract we just created. So I'm in a new directory here. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna right click and then open PowerShell window here. This will give me a console. This is on Windows. If you're on Linux or Mac, you should know how to use a console. I'm gonna start by installing Create React App. I'm using the NPM library here, which is part of Node.js. Now we've done that, I'm gonna create a new React App called Give Forever. Okay, next thing I wanna do is install the Ethers library. This is our web free library, which is gonna connect the React App to the RPC node, which is kind of like a node on the Ethereum network or the testnet network. And then that's gonna give us access to the smart contract. To do this, we're gonna npm install minus minus save ethers. Let's move into the give forever directory and run npm start. We've got a basic boilerplate here for a React front end. Now if we go into the code, I'm going to open up a new version of VS Code. So open with code, let's just span this out, open up the source directory, go into app.js. And we've got a basic framework here, which we can edit, and this should live update. So if we bring this development window to the side, so if we move our browser to the left and our text editor to the right, if we edit some code here, and save it with Control S. You can see it updates in the browser straight away. So this is quite a nice kind of development environment for building web front ends. Let's go ahead and import our ethers library. So we're gonna put this in here, save again, make sure we've got no errors. And then I'm gonna need the ABI from our contract. An ABI is like an instruction set which can be used to kind of tell the React front end how to interact with the contract. So if we go back to the compile page, we can compile the contract here, and then we can just click this ABI button and it will kind of give us this ABI details. Let's create a new file, control N, paste this in here. You can see this is JSON data, so we can kind of call this give forever ABI.json. And we want to import that as well. So let's go down here, save that. And the other thing we need is the contract address. Let's add that in. Const contract address, and we get that from the deployment script here. We just click this copy button, paste that in. So we've got the ethers library, the ABI, which is like the instruction set, and then the contract address so that the front end knows where to find the contract itself. Now I'm gonna create a new function. I'm gonna call this load data equals async. And here I'm gonna copy and paste three lines of commands. We can make this bigger for a bit so we can go through this. So first of all, we're gonna set a provider. So this is gonna be our RPC network. So we're gonna be using MetaMask to kind of connect from the front end to the, uh, the Ethereum network. Then we're gonna create a contract using the contract ABI and the contract address and the provider which was uh, instated in the last variable. And then finally, we're gonna get our greeting, which should be hello world. We're gonna set that by going await contract.hello. And that comes back to our hello function in the smart contract itself right here. So it's gonna return hi, which is this value here, hello world in theory. The final thing we need to do is just alert greeting for testing purposes. Now let's add a button in here to load data. We're gonna do button on click equals load data, and then a click me. Let's save this. Let's go back into the browser, and you can see we've got this click me button. Click this, and you can see it returns hello world, which is got from that external smart contract. So that's come, gone and kind of stored data and fetched data from a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. So this is kind of a high level overview of how a web free application will work. You'll have the smart contract deployed on a decentralized blockchain, and then you'll have an ethers library, which will connect via MetaMask or a digital wallet to a web front end, and that'll provide interaction with that smart contract. And obviously here, we're just using a simple smart contract, which returns a string. But as we start building this out, we can get more complex and start using kind of programmable money and building on the Lego bricks of DeFi.